It's on it in the morning, and it's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. And in the studio with us this morning, Chauncey Ross and State Police Troop Republic Information Officer Clifford Greenfield. And we're talking about the Emergency Services Expo coming Saturday, June 29th, to the White Township Recreation Complex on East Pike. Our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Gentlemen, good morning. Todd, good to see you. Good morning, sir. It's good Thanks for having us. Good to have you both with us here today. Chauncey, um, the Emergency Services Expo, we began last week uh, by talking with uh, some folks from, um, we, we had Creekside RA, Fire Department. Creekside and, uh, Fire Department. And, and People's Gas. And People's Gas. They were here then. Uh, and, and now we're going to turn our attention to law enforcement and, and how that will be represented that day. This will be the law enforcement component of our series here. Uh, the White Township Emergency Services Expo is organized to recognize four, four anchor organizations plus their partners in the region. Pennsylvania State Police uh, are the uh, agency that patrols White Township. They answer all the calls. They uh, they take care of things that are within uh, their domain. We've got township enforcement on township ordinances. That's a completely separate thing. Uh, but White Town, uh, the state police are the, the main uh, law enforcement agency of the township, but they do work in tandem with others who are nearby. Mm-hmm. Indiana Borough Police border right on, on the township. They're, it's a partnership, isn't it, Cliff? It is. Uh, the yes. Borough Police, yes. IEP Campus Police are basically wedged in between the borough and the township and the county sheriff department as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you can talk a bit about the partnerships uh, among the agencies in law enforcement. Sure. Well, I'll say that law enforcement is a lot of information sharing every day, back and forth between agencies, trying to track people down, trying to solve crimes, um, trying to just locate people. And we rely on our law enforcement partners here throughout the county for sharing information. So that's a routine thing for us. We're grateful for the other agencies. Uh, assistance. We do rely on them a lot. Um, Just within the past few days, uh, we had assistance from the Indiana Borough Police Department with locating a wanted individual, wanted for criminal trespass. Um, So we're grateful for those those partnerships. The way Chauncey described, you know, with all the the different agencies and and the connectivity between them all and the cooperation between them all, it's like the old Westerns. We got you surrounded. <laughs> you really do. Uh, you you try to surround the whole issue of law enforcement uh, right. so that from every angle right. uh, you can approach uh, when it when an emergency emergency happens. Right, right. And to build those, you're constantly building those relationships, just like we're constantly trying to build relationships with the public. And um, when it, when a crisis incident happens, and you already have those relationships established, it makes it so much easier. There's less chance for miscommunication or just lack of information so Mm -hmm. it's really critical Um, I work prior to coming to Indiana I was stationed out in Fulton County I was there for my first three years and when I left there it was state police coverage for the whole county and uh, we so we didn't have any local departments to rely on for assistance and then coming here to Indiana County it was a different story it was very nice uh, to come here and have all the extra resources. Yeah, yeah. Chauncey, uh, when the expo happens on June 29th, of course, state police will be represented, but law enforcement as a whole is a big part of this equation, isn't it? Right, uh, and, and it's a, there's a multi-purpose uh, to it as well. Uh, not only do officers like Trooper Greenfield and uh, the uh, canine handlers from Indiana Borough Police, Lieutenant Hogue and Patrolman Cla- uh Boston, I believe it is, mm-hmm. uh, and Sheriff Bayok and IUP's uh, police department director, who's, you don't hear a lot about it, but their their department is, is ever-present. Uh, director Tim Stringer will be a part of this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, part it's a, it's a way of introducing them to the folks of our community. Uh, Trooper Greenfield specialty is dealing with folks and developing those relationships with the community, but it's also going to be demonstrations and uh, talking about the opportunities to uh, to become one of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, in probably the last 15 years or so, the state has begun to put an emphasis again uh, on uh, replenishing the troops, if you will. Um, right. As uh, it, it just worked out that a number of troopers reached retirement age or chose to uh, 
to move on. Uh, and so there were openings created, uh, and that sort of uh, added a little burst of energy to the state police ranks, hasn't it? Yes, we've, we are recruiting heavily right now, probably more so than ever before. Um, law enforcement in general is uh, recruiting heavily. Applications are down across the board. Um, I'm sure you're aware that just in the past few months, the Pennsylvania State Police eliminated the college credit requirement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can now apply for the State Police Academy without any college credits. Um, so that has bolstered our recruitment efforts. Yeah, yeah, and very important, too. We saw um, with the Chevy Chase incident, but we've seen it in a number of different uh, ways, uh, the, the way that um, state police, uh, borough or other municipality police um, forces uh, work together, uh, mm -hmm. even bringing in the state attorney general's office, uh, whoever it happens to be, uh, mm -hmm. uh, when, when something big occurs, we think of, of the bigness of a situation right. uh, and how important it is to, to get a grip on everything. Uh, and to relate to the public, you know, if there is a, a danger out there, if there is a concern for public safety, you want to make sure that people know about that right away and know what to do in, in any given situation. We do. We do our best to, uh, to do that. Um, we rely on the public in a lot of cases to solve crimes. We mm -hmm. were not everywhere. Uh, we, we need the public's assistance, and we want to... Uh, Keep them informed to the best of our ability as well. Mm -hmm. um, so two-way street. It's a two-way street, exactly, Mr. Ross. It is. And I've learned that over the years, um, something that just comes with experience through dealing with dozens and hundreds of cases over the years. You see that, that you need help from the public. It is a two-way street. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When the expo happens on June 29th, what are we going to see from state police? What are going to so uh, we have, uh, as of now, three troopers lined up to attend. We have uh, Trooper Tappy, who's a member of our Office of Community Engagement. She's a community affairs officer. We have uh, Trooper McMullen. He's out of our Evansburg station. He's an alternate community services officer, but primarily works patrol. Uh, and Trooper DeMarco who is an explosives detection canine handler. Uh, so he is planning to come and talk with the public about uh, his role in working with his canine partner uh, in searching for explosives. Mm -hmm. And he's a very unique specialty within the state police. Um, so it'd be good. It'd be great to have him there. Hopefully he can, can make it. I've also submitted a request for our CERT team and our hazardous device and explosives section. I'm waiting to hear back from them. Hopefully they can attend as well. But as you know, in a lot of these uh, types of events, it's kind of like a game day call for us. It's, yeah. We have to be available. If there's an incident going on, we're, we're required to go and handle that. Um, well, that was the case just last night, right. <laughs> just down the road a piece. Uh, right. The CERT team uh, was called out, and uh, and that's that's the nature of the business. It is, and it's it's a minute-by-minute operation yeah um, you yeah. just have to go with, and I always try and tell folks I'll plan to be there I can't guarantee it yeah that's yeah that's that's what it's all about when yeah. you're when you're in that line of work Chauncey that's our ex well it's our understanding for the event here as well a anybody they're in the business of dropping everything at a moment's notice to to respond so we are under the understanding that anything could change as of 10 o'clock on that Saturday morning sure uh, the borough, we, we took a roll call just a few minutes ago. Um, there's you and I and Trooper Green, Greenfield here in the studio. We could be outnumbered by the number of canines. At the, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the one Trooper Greenfield mentioned from PSP, Indiana Borough has two comfort dogs, yeah. Scout and Axel, that we are uh, anticipating, and uh, Sheriff Fiox, uh, new canine uh, officer uh, court. Mm -hmm. So we've got four canines that are on the roster so far to yeah. attend. Uh, you'll, you'll hear from the borough police. They'll, the comfort dogs will do demonstrations. They will, it'll be a chance for kids to meet the canine, meet these canines. Mm -hmm. And that's their specialty, uh, being friendly and, and reassuring and providing comfort in cases of stress. Uh, Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Iox, uh, canine will be there as well. He'll do demonstrations of what that, that dog's skills might be. Uh, at the from IUP campus police, I don't know that they have a dog, but they have 
they, they have a unique a unique role in our community. Their patrol their patrol area involves uh, probably the most diverse population of any of these agencies. Sure. Uh, the the borough has a pretty steady population of local folks, but the IUP campus police are dealing with people who come from a variety of cultures and societies and areas all across the country, and they have special skills in knowing and recognizing and uh, relating to uh, to their clientele, as it were. Mm-hmm. They're partners at a moment's notice if something is going on in Indiana. Indiana Borough Police, you may hear, may have four or five people on duty at a given time. Not truly that, though, because at a moment's notice, they can call on the uh, three, four, five other guys from men and women from uh, the campus police to assist. So it's any incident can bring in more people than those that are really assigned to the jurisdiction. So we learn about those partnerships as well. And one of the things about the emergency services expo, and I know Trooper Greenfield, you would uh, you would echo this, is, uh, you know, Chief Shaw, when he comes in, always makes a special emphasis that uh, they love to get to know children and have children be comfortable around police officers. You'd love for that to happen, and this expo can help in that respect. Yes, yes. This is the perfect venue for that. Mr. Ross has done a, a lot of work for months planning this event. We're really grateful for his work because it, we know it's going to lead to those relationship-building experiences. It's going to lead to children coming, seeing a police officer, seeing a firefighter, seeing a first responder, medic, EMT, um, and seeing that we're real people, uh, just like them and their family members. We've chosen this profession uh, and it's a respectable profession. Yeah. And that's what we want to convey. And we want them to uh, feel safe when they're around us. We want that, them to remember that experience. They may remember that for the rest of their lives. I know when I was a kid, if I saw a state trooper, it stuck in my mind because I didn't see them too often. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of respect for them. So we appreciate his efforts. Trooper, when did when did becoming a state trooper become a career decision for you? You know what? Growing up, it was never on my radar. Uh, it wasn't until I was in college. I was studying business. Mm-hmm. Um, I attended Grove City College. And uh, through my business courses there, I um, was thinking about a career in the military. Um, but the Pennsylvania State Police was always uh, something that I had a lot of respect for. And I wanted to do something in, in this community service world. Um, but I didn't necessarily want to be deployed around the world in the military Mm -hmm. and uh, thought I would try for the state police and I was fortunate enough to be selected. Well, it's terrific stuff. And, and folks can learn those kinds of stories uh, on Saturday, June 29th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. White Township Recreation Complex on East Pike, the Emergency Services Expo presented by White Township. Gentlemen, thank you. I want to give a shout out to Rosebud Mining. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, major, major factor in making all this happen. We thank them and uh, our other supporters as well. You betcha. You betcha. Chauncey, we'll see you next week. Trooper Greenfield, we see you from time to time. Right. Thanks for coming in today. Yes, sir. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. 27 minutes after 8 o'clock. Jake in the newsroom, he's coming up. And uh, we also, in our next hour, we're going to talk.